Hello, welcome. Welcome to my little... My name is Richard Thomas. Welcome to my little tutorial or demonstration on modelling the human eye. Hope you can... Uh, hope you enjoy it. This is how I do it. Um, or how I would do it. Doesn't need to be too detailed. I'm not going to go into great detail. It's going to be a decent looking eye. It's going to be a blue eye, I think. Not too much detail. It's going to be how you set it up. I'm going to be using Lightwave. We start in the model in Lightwave, bring it into ZBrush, and then um, bring it back into Lightwave for render. So, right, so uh, let us begin. Now, this is my reference board. I'm using Pure, Pure Ref. I recommend you get it if, if it's a fantastic app. It's, it's free. All you need is a donation. But it is really good. You can just load all your images and you can just size them up and everything. You can have it over your, your application, which is really good. So, yeah, I recommend you get it. Okay, so I'm going to put that inside because I don't need it just yet. All right, I'm going to start off with Lightwave. I'm just starting off with Lightwave Modeler. And then I'm going to bring it into ZBrush. So, first off, an eyeball is just a, a round sphere, isn't it? It's nothing to, uh, too complicated about that. As you can see, I've got my numeric panel open here. That's what we need. Okie dokie. I need to flip it so that's facing the front. Uh, Z axis, yeah, the Z. How many segments? We define our segments 48, 24. We want, a, we want an e even number, really. Uh, I'm going to go for more than that, actually. Times that by two. Times that by two. We've got enough segments to play with there. Right, cool, that'll do. Press space to uh, initiate that. That's good. So this will be the front, I guess. What we need to do is we need to have three, there's three aspects to this model. There'll be the pupil, the the iris, which is what contain all the inf all the all the detail that will make or break it really. And then the sclera, which is just be a veiny white. It's the outside of the eye basically. We need two. We need surfacing for all these three things. So, right. First off, I'll make the iris. Well, lasso. Uh, lasso some there. Lasso around here. This will be for the iris, this is. If I go into selection, I can expand. So I'll expand that as, as big as I want the iris, basically. Mm. Will that do it? That should do it. That's, this could be our iris. So if I press um, stretch tool, which is H, if I hold shift, as long as I've got, I go into the mouse selection, this will center the action to the mouse, my mouse cursor. Right there, hold and shift. Do that again. Go. All the way in there. So I've flattened all these polygons without doing anything with them, really. That didn't work. We don't want it to move, do we? Yeah, there we are. That's cool. That's good. Now we need a pupil. So do that action again. This will be just a hole. So expand, expand. How big do we want our pupil? Uh, contract. Yeah, right. So I've selected these. It's gone all the way through the back. We don't, we don't want these selected now. So lasso around that to deselect. So we've got a front facing pupil now. Now I click delete. Delete these polygons. Don't need them. Uh, what we need now is if I call this press Q for the surface editor. If I call this human eye, we'll go. Sclera. Oh god, we've got capital letters on here. Human eye sclera. Uh, 
think that's how you spell it. <laughs> Give it a white colour, actually. Nice white colour. And I select these. Expand, 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 expand. Press Q again. We'll call this Iris. Uh, give it a give it a blue. I'm gonna go for a blue eye, I think. There we are. That's good. Right, well, I want some thickness, so I'm gonna use the multiply thickness tool here. I'm it's in multiply tab and thicken. Just gonna thicken it a little bit. Well, that what I'll do is it'll create thickens the whole model and creates geometry inside. So we've got an inside as well. That's pretty cool. We don't need it too thick. We don't need that good. I want the inside to have different, different uh, surface. If I go into select the inside of these polygons now. Is that going in the inside as well? Yeah, never mind. Yeah, select these, cut, paste. Now, if I select all connected now of the inside, it should do that. So, I've selected all of the inside polygons, press Q, da -da -da. inside. We'll just call that inside. Now, because I cut mop polygons, these are separate now, as you can see. It's a separate model. It's not connected, so just press merge points now. It's merged it all together. And now what I have is three surfaces. One for the inside of the eye, one for my iris, and one for the outside of the eye, the square. That's all right. That's cool. I'm gonna change. I'm gonna change the color of this to make it so we can see it. All right, that'll do. Uh, press S to save. We'll make a new. We can do folder. Humani. Right. So we're gonna UV map it now. Then we when we bring it into ZBrush, we've already got our UV maps. I think that'll be quite. It's quite handy. If I go into edge selection mode, uh, just select all the way around here. Select all that. If I select this one here, we need to define our seams for the UV maps, really. Select, select all, select loop there. Now if I go map, ABF UV unwrap, click on that, go into my texture panel. Uh, yeah, there we are, that's good. Cool. What's that? Right. Most of the detail is gonna be on the, gonna make this my single viewpoint now, the UV map. This is the iris, this, the iris. Most of my detail is going to be on this. So this one needs to be the biggest UV map. This one needs to take up the most space. Because that's where all the detail is going to be. These, again, if that's the outside, that's the outside. That will need to be, for some reason, that's come off like that. Doesn't matter. That's actually probably quite big enough. This is the inside of the eye. It's not going to have any any detail in it. It's just going to be black, I think, when I texture that. Make sure it f f goes in. It's just going to not going to have much detail in it at all, I don't think. So it doesn't need to take up much space, does it? We'll have this in the center. We'll have this in the center, I think. Quite cool.
Just gonna just gonna squeeze them all in somehow. Again, that really doesn't need to be that big. Maybe we can rotate that. Yeah, I could probably rotate that and just fit that right at the bottom. We'll get these two in first. These are the most important ones. Sometimes you wish you had more space, but you can do a, uh, what's it called? You can have different separate panels. I forget what it's called now. I can save that, I'm happy with that. So that's our eyeball setup. It's got surfacing, the polygon's made, surfacing, and it's got UV maps. Maybe we can have an edge loop there. Double side that. Yeah, okay. So we're going to save that. That's our eyeball made. Now I'm going to make the cornea. Uh, we can make the cornea now because we've got the settings already done. Go into layer 2. Press sphere again. It should create me a nice, it should be the same size. I don't need to bother too much. I need to make this a little too much of that at the moment. I'm just going to make this slightly bigger. Again, it really doesn't need to be, doesn't need, can't be that much bigger. I think that's too big. We'll go, we'll do it numerically. Uh, 101. Cool. Select these. Now it's got oh, quite a bulbous front. Is that the right word? <laughs> it's got curves in the front so a oh, picture somewhere Doesn't matter expand 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 now for select the T press T for move do have a picture mm -hmm. load this picture up yeah here we are Press D, load that up. Uh, right, select, invert that. Cool. Match the image up. Uh, there we are. It's close enough. Right. Start again. Just like that. Expand, 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 expand. I think it's about there. If I, using the mouse selection, stretch it to that. Awesome, that's good.
I might just make a little new edge loop there, right down the middle. If I select that, size them down just so we can. It's probably a bit too pronounced that. All right, we'll do that. We'll keep that. Save. Uh, press Q for the cornea. That'll do. Got this. Don't need to worry about this yet. Really don't. If I go into layers. First layer, human eye. I'm naming these layers now. Second will be cornea. Uh, it helps me spell it right. Well, parents, it's the eyeball. Right, that's simple. Uh, okay, really don't need to worry about that yet. Mm. The texture of it. Get rid of this eyeball. So, it's our eye made. It's all the geometry laid down. The UV map, the surface, it's all ready to go. So, I go with this IO, this is the export panel. I'm just going to click OBJ on the uh, the export panel. Uh, human eye, and we're, we're, we're exporting it as an OBJ format. That's a universal universal format for 3D modeling, really. So save. That should have saved it. It's exported it all with the UV map in tow. So, I'm ready to load up. Seabush now. This is our um, UV user interface with Zbush. We all know it. Man, I love Zbush. Uh, now, tool panel. We need to load our model now. Now, it gives us a basic default sphere. This is an our sphere. We need to import for mesh. Find a folder. Human eye. Right, this is our eyeball now. Yay, there we are. How good is that? Has it created me panel? Oh, it has. That's handy. It's even produced, uh, separate everything, polygroups for me, which is really handy. So it means I can just hide all the body this is the iris surface that's the inside and that's the that's the square it's all separated it's, it's using it's used the uv maps i've created i believe that's really handy that i'm happy with that Doo -doo -doo. so i could test to see if our uv maps are working or here I don't know what that is. Hmm. Why is it doing that? Oh, well, whatever. Maybe I can go do, 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 unwrap. I can make my own UV maps here. I really don't know why it's done that.
yeah, that'll do. It's we've, I've just created its own that that'll have to do. It's UV mapped it via its party group, so I've just done it in ZBrush. Yeah, whatever. These things happen. <laughs> Lightwave's UV tools are, are very poor, if I'm honest with you. I really dislike them. But we we got there in the end. Uh, right, okay. Now we start sculpting our detail. So if I divide this, divide this, divide this, we go all the way to the detail we need. So we about 30 million polygons. Again, I'm not going to start with that. Right, using our tablet, we first off we need to select uh, symmetry, turn that on, and radial. And what it does is it will create me as many iterations as I want. I'm about 12 will do. I'm going to go on the Z axis, and then look, I can now sculpt identically all the way across in a radial manner which is really good really handy for what we need to do because we're going to need to well, i'm going to pull my reference up now that's vitally important you look at reference for your models but look it, it spirals outwards and then we have the muscle structures i quite like that one to be fair i think so this one here is the way, the way to go. All right, so I'm going to start sculpting now. Do -do -do. And I want a very low, first off, I want a very low intensity. Go very low intensity. We're going to sculpt just some. Just something like that. Just like an underlying deep piece of detail. I get my music playing. Uh, you need to listen to music as you're doing it, don't you? <laughs> uh, I'm going to five and using the Damien standard tool in the sub menu. I'm going to. As you can see, you can do that. Press S. We need to very low, very low intensity. We're just going to start working our way up. Starting from the center all the way outwards. Using your mouse, uh, it's all your tablet. A good tablet is essential, and you just start to do that. Watching your reference as best you can. I'm going to go up now. Again, this I'm not really not going to do too much detail on this. What I want to do first is get, get as much of this. Um, I'm going to get these, these muscle structures in, really. Mm -mm -mm. That's cool. Now we turn turn symmetry off for this. By using Control Alt, I can remove using Control Alt tool, I can remove the mask. So you just want to try and mimic this. Um, best you can. Try and mimic this. What well, you look at your reference closely. 
just build what you see. Lower the uh, pinky bob on that, the size of the brush, and go in. You get what you put out, put in with stuff like this. So, yeah. Just got to put a, lot, a bit of effort in. Again, I'm not going to do too detailed. Also, when you're doing this at Iris, there are readily available um, assets online that you can just lose you know i mean you could just literally just load up an iris uh, alpha and and be done with it but i quite like to make my own thing if you know what i mean and this is this is sort of the point of the whole thing we're, we're artists really we're creating stuff aren't we there's joy in that i think so if you wanted to create something really quickly, you just, yeah, you just could, couldn't you? You, you just get it done as fast as you can. Okay, right. I'm going to wrap this, um, I'm going to wrap this, just masking up a little bit and dragging it out a bit here, I think. <laughs> right, okay. That's our mask created. Uh, now I want to do is invert that control. You hold control at any click anywhere on your canvas. It inverts the mask. As you can do, I do that. Or if you want, you can go on the Masking properties and click inverse. Does the same thing. Right, that's that. What we want to do is we want to bring. We're going to bring out all these muscle structures, and we're going to bring them out. We're going to pull it out almost to move them. So we'll click that. Click the move, and I get this little widget. This little uh, widget thing. Click on the arrow. So I can do this now. So I'm pulling these polygons. Now we don't want to pull them out too much. Just enough for us to create that. So if I unhide everything now, we have this. So beginnings of a basic eyeball. I think that was quite nifty. That's our muscle structure done. It's going to need a bit of cleaning in though. It will need some cleaning up, but we can do that now. Just use the soften brush.
to smooth everything out. Some of the polygons will be quite jagged, so you need to clean it up a little bit. Right, okay, activate symmetry again. We're going to Damien Standard. Again, we can now ah, we can start really having fun with this now. Is the mask still available? No. I guess I could use an alpha for this. Mm -mm. Move you out the way. Ah. Yeah, okay. Using this. What that'll do is it'll sort of just create more than one line. Of course. Lower the intensity very low. Yeah. Now we just start painting all the way up. Nah, I don't like that. I'm going to go back to the original method. Uh, just do it individually. It's a little, it's, it looks a bit too busy, doesn't it? I don't overcrowd this with. Just because you can do detail doesn't mean you should sometimes. Sometimes less is more. Again, I just don't need to do. We just don't need to. Uh, Put that much effort in. It's just an eye. I want it to look good, but it doesn't need to look that good. It doesn't need to look that detailed. We're not going to render it right up close. Mm -mm. Da, da, da. Right, okay. Turn that off, and then I'm going to go sort of make some little lumpy area. I'm going to build this out a bit, flex these holes in. They come up a bit, rather than they look a bit lacking in detail, don't they? Again, you're just sculpting as much, as good as you want, as much detail as you want in this thing. to your heart's content, I guess. Uh, okay, we'll go back to David Standard and then <clears throat> no, it's wrong one.
just going to keep building up. It's good fun, I think. It can be, anyway. Just making these holes a, a little deeper. Brings them out a bit more, doesn't it? Right, okay. I'm gonna wrap this sculpting up a little bit now because dragging out a bit. It's only again, it's only basic. Nothing you can put as much effort and detail into this as you want. In fact, if I would, have, I would sort of advise you to do that. I guess definitely, the more effort you put in, the better your render will look. But if it's just a character, that's um, it's going to be in the distance. You just need something to look like a human eye, really. Don't you? You don't need you don't need too much detail, really. As long as it looks like an eye, and and uh, we can tell it's an eye. Again, that's all you need. Okie dokie. That's cool. That looks really nice, that. Okay, so... Do, 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 do. I think we need some lumpy areas around the iris. I guess. I might come in handy. Turn symmetry on and just, like... Build some little... Make it... Just make it a little rougher around the iris area. Just so it doesn't look that bad. Probably, probably need to uh, smooth these off as well. Might be a good idea. Mm -hmm. Turn that up to crank that up to a hundred. Okay, we just lower the polygon density down so I can get more strength in the smooth tool. Looking bad, is it? <clears throat> At this point, always a good idea to save your work in case anything happens, you get a crash or whatever. If it works on my computer. Yeah. Always a good idea to save your work. You, you can't, really can't plan for things that are going wrong. Looks all right, that, doesn't it? Uh, right, I'm going to wrap this, get get this uh, 
almost finished off, I guess. So we'll colorize. Uh, go into that, press RGB, Z add off. And what I want to do is I want to color all the aspects of it individually. But this just needs to be dark, dark gray. I'm going to the color palette and fill object. So I can now it's all those polygons are now colored that. Uh, we go to the iris. I'm got what color? What color should we have? Uh, I guess some blue. Yeah, blue is a good color. I got blue eyes. Can't go wrong with blue eyes. So if we I'm going to go for really dark, I'm going to go for this sort of base, baseline blue. And then we're going to fill it in with a, with a lighter colours of blue. So that's the blue. And then this, again, this just needs to be, I'm guessing that, it's going to be like a, a, a red, pinky red, all the way at the back. But I want it to be quite white, actually. That could work. Maybe a bit lighter. These are just basic colours. Right. Because I'm focusing most of my work on, on this. We're going to be doing this. I'm going to be uh, doing the iris. Mm, I need to find a look at my reference now. Very bluey. Yeah, I'll do it. Now just fill it in like that. Yeah, I guess that. I want to do it black. So I want it black for there, don't we? I think, anyway. Mm -mm -mm. That's like a yellowy, isn't it? A yellowy colour in the middle. Something like that, I guess. What I probably might do is follow the yellow colour on these. It looks like it's following the muscle structure. So, you can right, turn, turn that off. And we can do that. We'll just follow this, the contours of what I've sculpted. Because you can't have, you can't place color anywhere. And you sort of has to follow what you sculpted, really. Otherwise, it won't, make, won't match. Yeah, this is looking all right. It's not bad, that. And then... Mm -mm -mm. For some reason we need to install that. Okay. 
what we can do is go into our masking panel. Mask by cavity. What let's do is we create a mask inside all of our details, as you can see. It's done, done it all there. And I can uh, paint whiter, lighter areas or darker areas inside. And it will sort of avoid, should avoid, will avoid or it will just sort of create, allow me to, need to go into the highest subdivision level for that though. That means it gives us better, give us better, um, a better mask for that. So clear that uh, mask by cavity. As you can see, but now creates that. Mm. It's looking all right, that, but not quite turned out how I wanted it to. If I use this bottom one here, it creates a nice little, yeah, that's better. Should just create nice little lines across like this. Nice mix of colours is, is something you want as well. Rather than just have two shades, you can have multiple shades. Yeah. No, right, turn that off. Yeah, I don't like that one. We'll go to the original. Again, you just gotta keep sculpting. It can be tedious, but I quite I quite personally quite like doing this really. I think it's quite fun. We sort of created this little shape.
Again, I, I probably do need to speed this up a bit. So if I'm rushing, I do apologize. I don't want this video to be too long. I would like the center of the eyeball to be right. Okay, that'll do. Yeah, it's looking quite good, that actually. Yeah, into that again. Very quickly, I'm gonna finish this off now. I need a pinky sort of. A pinky sort of red for the back of the eye it's not going to be visible it's going to be right in the back in a head if you want to if you're going to put this in a head that is i'm going to imagine it's in a head again it's not she's a drag rectal just to create a nice little pinky red i suppose Probably, uh, probably overdone it on that. <laughs> yeah, I'll do. Go into the standard version. Very small brush. We'll make a deeper red. And we can start painting the veins. Nothing too. We need to make it a bit smaller. Yeah. You need to find your right intensity of everything. It takes a bit of time. So now, I'm just going to paint some veins. Mm -hmm. Make these up as put as much fun as you want in these. Now I've got the Z add because it's uh, it's creating some bump, bump for the bump along the side. Warm texture is also creating some actual bumpage on the model. Might actually need to be a bit higher actually. Again, you just make this up. Now I'm making these individual ones. I'm gonna load up. I'm actually gonna load up. Um, load up now. There is alpha. Alpha map that will do this for me. Cool. I think I'll just do that. I've got some individual ones, some good looking ones, I think. Lower that. And you should be able to. Uh... Create some good ones.
again, I don't want don't want this to be too harsh. Yeah, I'll do. Again, none of this detail at the back is going to be visible, so. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I'm going to follow the contour of, of the, uh, the ones I've just created on my own. Just give it some randomization. Sorry, pardon me. Nice veiny, veiny eyeball. Just along the edges. Just look, you can see the veins there, so. We don't overdo it though. Subtlety sometimes is needed. Right, cool. That's really nice. That. Uh, again, right, I'm going to save this. Awesome. That's not the view we want. We want this view. That's the front of it. Oh, sorry. Ugh, well, whatever. It's facing backwards. Uh. That's looking quite nice, though, isn't it? I think that will look quite smashing. That could look quite good when I finalise the render. Uh. Right now, I need to, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna call that a day now. And um, yeah, we'll call that a day. I'm gonna listen to my music so it doesn't go off. I'm gonna export. Yeah, we'll export the the image maps now and load them up into Lightwave. It's simple, simple as that, really. Um, we want to go for. Let's go for free. Well, maybe four detail. No, we'll go three, and then we'll create the displacement map. We'll click on displacement map and go create displacement map. <clears throat> now it's created me an image map based off our UV maps. Now he's a flick fliffy. Create and export. <coughs> Follow me. That's human eye underscore DM. <coughs> Wait for that to complete. Uh, we don't need that. So we've created our displacement map, and now we go crank, crank a geometry right to seven. So we're going to create a texture map now. <coughs> Could take a while. Oh, it's done it. Um, da -da 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 -da. Texture map. Create. New from Polypaint. And it will create me a texture map. Well, it's not an ideal texture map. With a... You click clone. Flip V. Always need to flip it on the V axis.
color map. I call everything CM for color map or whatever. So we've got our color map and we got our displacement map. Now we need to export the model. Now I wasn't planning on doing this, but because I made a little bit of a mistake with the UV map creation, I've had to create UV maps in ZBrush. I'm going to have to export the model. Otherwise, I won't be able to load those texture maps onto our UV map. So that simply, it's go export tool, and it will export it. Now I'm going to overwrite this. I think human eye overwrite that. So I've exported the model, exported the displacement map and the texture map, the color map. That should be it, really. Now go back into. Uh, Back to my model modeler. This is defunct now because my UV maps did not work. Move that to the side. No. Yeah, well, fortunately, it's created a slightly rubbishy, it's got me some level of displacement going on there. These are our UV maps. They're all loaded up and nice. So I have to go back and I have to do what I did earlier on, really. And uh, human eye. I'm going to have to separate it, actually. Uh, fortunately, it's created me that. We'll just we'll give it the same convention name conventions as I did before. Inside, it's that, and then the iris. Mm -mm. Then default mats is the last one remaining. We'll call that Sclera. Is it, mm. is it that? I'm going to copy these from the original model. Uh, copy, paste. Copy, paste. Copy, paste. Turn on smoothing. Uh, right, go back to the original eyeball and cut, cut and paste this uh, cornea. Uh, I can see it intersecting a little bit. That's not what we want. Size it up. That sorts that. Mm -mm. We'll call this cornea and parents are gonna layer one. Now I'm gonna save this as we save it as I think it's saving it as the OBJ, but we want to save it as this. I'll close that now. Mm, whatever. Right, okay. So our model created, got everything loaded up now. So let's load up the layout. Don't know what ZBrush is doing. I have you saved that now.
Ugh. Load object. <laughs> wow. Microwave object. Save. Why is that not saving? Yeah, do. Why is it? Oh my God, what's going on here? <laughs> oh, right. For some reason, all my data on my hard drive's gone. Right, okay, that's great. Bear with me. Be zebras, won't it? Saving quick saves, I think. Yeah. Well, there are three gigs turned up now. Wow. Right. Thank you. Yay. Joy's a 3D model, eh? This is my model. I call it here. As you can see, the basic surfacing is there. Uh, right, okay. All we need to do load 2D image. I'm going to try and be really quick with this now. Yeah, colour map. Hook the colour to the colour of that. And we go into this uh, thing, UV map, mapping, UV map, and we select our UV map. So that should. Oh no, okay, right. Our corner here is covering the eye. As a result, as a result, um, As a result, um, you can't see it. It's just a basic surface. So I'm just going to give it a glass. Fun, very handily, lightweight. And all oh, most most 3D modeling tools, to be fair, will probably have basic presets. So I can just load a preset there, and it should create me. Uh, Mm. OK, 
okay Hmm. Okay, first, okay, let's load up this corner here. What I need to do actually is one thing I've forgotten to do is I need to thicken it. We need we need to we need some thickness in this model. Not a lot. Save that. So now I can see all the way through it. Hmm. We'll move the cornea out of the way. Why is that not? Oh, so, did I sculpt it in the wrong way? Yeah, I did. Yeah. It's facing the wrong way, the cornea. If I remember correctly, I did it the opposite way. So we'll just take that. Simple enough operation. I don't like it facing, don't like my eyeball facing the wrong way though, so. I will save that. Cool. I can return that to where it is now. We'll turn that now. Nothing ever goes smoothly. <laughs> it's looking alright, isn't it? Um, if we go into the iris, what we need to do is do, 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 quickly load up another another image instance, another in instance node, and click it to the displacement map. So we load up uh, our displacement, UV map projection, human eye. Actually, I'm going to move this now so I can see it. Okay. What we need to do is... Do, do, do. I'm going to put the subdivision on the top, the modifier stack order, surface displacement. That's going... Uh, we probably need to, we need to find the right value now. Now I need to up the up the subdivision levels just for a moment. On display subdivision. As you can see. Oh, okay. I don't think we have subdivision. Don't think we have. We've got quite a tab. It's got to be subdivision mode. As it will work. Save that. Yeah, there we are. Now we've got to find the right value we need now. Cool. I'm going to load up. I'm going to put that on top of that. Uh, now we need the our displacement workflow. And I have already saved out what I need. Displacement nodes. I've saved up. And it's a previous project. So no. Click no to that. What I should do is. 
This is our node set up for displacement map. Don't need that one, don't need that one, don't need that one. That's the final one. Uh, I've cut a normal to the vector and then the result to that. That's our node network. But first we need to load the image map that we have. We created displacement map. Human eye displacement map. Boom, boom, boom. Human eye, that's it. Should look a bit better now. See again, you've got to find the right value. This is applying displacement over the whole mesh now, rather than the surface. As you can see, we've got our veins in and everything. Isn't that look cool? But again, we've got to find the right value. That works. I think subtract goes to that all the time. Multiply is where we increase or decrease the yeah that's enough Cool. Now we need to. Now we've got this. I'm just going to copy this, all of these, and paste them onto that. So we've got a color and a displacement on all the other surfaces on the square as well. Okay, that's not what I wanted. Oh right, okay. It's copied the copied that. Blech. Yeah, well the texture's fine. Move the cornea back. <laughs> That's nice. I like it. Make a black backdrop. Ain't that good? Quite happy with how it's turned out. If I just make uh, just load up a pre basic preset for the eyeball. All right, I'm gonna wrap this up now. Did it get it? We'll probably have a. I think I quite like a. Have a two light setup, just one on either side. Two area lights either side. Make it. Blue, don't know. I'll pick a warmer color. Doesn't that look good? Get nice and close. Yeah, 
<laughs> I like it. All right, subdivision levels. Uh, yeah. If I put that at 10. No, we don't. We want it to render at 10. We don't need it to display it because that's just taking up. It's just taking up too much RAM. RAM. You, you want to make it as easy as you can. Isn't that good? That's the final render. Again, it doesn't look amazing, but it's good enough, isn't it? Because you know, you'll, you'll have your eyeball. Eyeball just goes in, in a human head. And you'll probably be that distance away from it. And you won't, unless you're going really close. And if, and if you want to go that close, you spend longer sculpting and do a bit more detail on it. Right, uh, I'm going to make a little render now. Let's make a great render. Save the scene. Human eye. Always good to save your stuff. This is gonna take up might take a few minutes, so I'm gonna wrap it up. Uh, thanks for watching. Here's the final look of it. I'll click render now and thanks for watching. Yeah. Thank you very much.